So Kanye tells people months in advance that he's going to rap about Jesus only and only positive things. He goes and does Sunday services all summer and he comes out with an album about Christianity and God and the media still freaks out about it. Again, listening to Jesus is King. No. I think that this album is trash. Let's stop acting like this is dope musically. It's not. This is just bad overall. The parts of this album that's actually good are the parts without Kanye. Yeah. There's a lady that's singing on one of these tracks like she was bodying it and then you hear Kanye's horse ass out of tune voice coming f the whole flow. Th this whole spiritual rebirth awakening thing, right? I, I thought a big part of that is sort of Jesus preaching humility. I don't feel like there's any humility here, especially once we get to the interviews and he's saying he's still the greatest art artist of all time and all that stuff. It just it doesn't feel sincere. Welcome back to Andrew Says, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once coming to you live from the North Pole, from Latvia to Norway to Denmark to Iceland to Greenland, we are here with you in studio. Kanye's new album has triggered the media. His loving of God has triggered the media. Even if you're not Christian or religious, that has to make you laugh. It's number one in so many countries on different streaming platforms, on iTunes at least it was number one in five different places at once. But if you go online and read and watch the reviews, it's like uh, when tr Trump goes on TV and says something people don't like, and then just all the media trashes him, no matter what it is. That's basically what it's like reading the Kanye reviews. It's like the reviewing Trump. It doesn't matter what was said or what was done. It's bad no matter what. Now, the video I just showed you, I wanted to focus on a couple of things they said first off. Um, showing this guy's shirt, I want to mention... I, I didn't notice for a while when I watched it. Um, it says, society says, black male dead or in jail by 21. Darker the skin, the less attractive. I'm not sure who, th who thinks that, but that's a common thing you hear. Um, Trump is my president, F society. So edgy. So we know where he's coming from, at least a little bit. Um, you're free to wear your shirt, but political shirts I'm not a big fan of. Then uh, this lady, sorry, I'm not familiar with any of them. <laughs> This lady says, um, there's no humility here because he's still saying he's the best. To that I say, I don't know what they want from Kanye West. They don't want him to be himself. They don't want him to be somebody else. They don't want him to talk about anything, it seems. He literally made an album about God that people still seem to like, and yet they hammer him anyways. Now, what do I think about the album? I listened to it uh, over the weekend. I think it's not his best album. I do like two to three songs, and two of those songs I think are very good. Very good Kanye songs. He also has Kenny G on a song, and a song with the Clips, which is a rap group that hasn't been together for a long time until they came back onto this song, so that's a pretty big deal. Yet I go online, and an album that's number one in five countries on iTunes alone, uh, US, Brazil, Canada, Russia and Australia, number two in Britain, and number seven in Germany. They must not like Kanye West. And all you see about it is hate. When when they see Kanye now, the blue check marks on Twitter and the people in, infused into Hollywood, all they see is Donald Trump. They can't get past it. Some people, and I don't want to say who they are, but people from a sp specific political viewpoint, they can't separate politics from anything. The political brainwashing is so ingrained into the pop culture, into the Hollywood culture, so much that they are now triggered by Kanye doing an album about Jesus. A boot, Jesus, just to correct myself. It's pronounced a boot, everybody. Now listen to what the third guy claims about Kanye. Yeah, because if you say that it's not good, then you don't like, you don't yeah. love Jesus. <laughs> He's using Jesus as a bulletproof vest, man. Whatever, yo. Jesus as a bulletproof vest, you guys. No one is saying as if that if you dislike the album, you dislike Jesus. They're saying that it's weird that Kanye West can talk about anything he wants uh, for 10, 15 years, however long it was, probably about 15. Um, of course, scantily clad women and partying and uh, big asses and everything, and then even his songs last year, uh, which were very vulgar that I can't repeat on this. And then he does a song about Jesus, and you still think, oh, it's this is terrible stuff. Oh, my goodness. But everything else before this was a... Uh... So they're calling it trash, and it's the fact that he did, an album, <laughs> he did an album so innocent that people will still openly hate is very Trumpy. Very, so much Trumpism in the way that it's covered. So it, it, it doesn't matter what he's saying. It, it's evil, and, it's, and we'll get to the people that say it's white supremacy later. That's a good one. Stick around for that. So no matter what he does, you it, it's covered by uh, his 
relationship to Trump or is support of Trump, so therefore blanketly and patently evil. Now, it's pretty obvious to me, a non-religious guy, um, that the media doesn't want anything God-related in there. Now, I couldn't care less either way if there was in there, but it's pr um, if that was in there. But it's pretty obvious to me, and um, by this album, showcases that the media doesn't really want anything God-related out there to be popular. It's like when Trump was talking about the um, the leader of ISIS that they took out. Oh, he was too graphic in his <laughs> graphic in his description of the, killing the leader of ISIS. ISIS. The newspaper, the newspapers even did their best to call to to not call him the leader of ISIS to say that he's not a bad man. There were some people for days were mocking the the Washington Post headline about it. So Connie told you in advance that he's dedicating himself to God. That his music is going to be about this. And the media is still like, how dare you? How dare you promote Jesus? How dare you celebrate Columbus Day, everybody? Thanksgiving is evil. So it's not only them, though. It's not only the people that I just showed you. There's much more that I have prepared. I did I did some digging for this one. It wasn't even actually digging. It was just searching Kanye West and seeing the top results of calling him evil and a white supremacist. The Consequence of Sound album review says, Kanye West even bores God with his latest album, The Passionless, Jesus is King. Complex says, The Church of Satan issues a response to Kanye West's Jesus, King, Jesus is King. Satan is the best friend Kanye ever have, had, and he will keep him in business all these years. Now, Complex is supposed to be a highly credible um, music outlet, okay? And this is the best they come up with. It's very sad, very telling. Another guy, Sammy Rhodes. You know what this Monday needs? A few more white guys weighing in on the new Kanye Kanye album. Have you guys come across this yet? The uh, the liberal white guys that hate themselves for being white. They think white people are the worst thing to ever happen. It's it's a cool new thing. I uh, challenge you to go seek it out. Craig Bro Dude. Now he's the most reasonable person I found. He seems to write for a lot of big publications. Um, he's actually pretty fair. I wrote about Kanye West, Jesus King, a spirit of change, of course, that's not without serious faults. Now, I think that's the most fair one. It's not a great album. It's not as good as his last album, but it's got some, it's obviously a change of direction. It's got a couple good songs, but it has some serious faults. And then the Babylon Bee, just for fun. Recording industry adds explicitly Christian warning label to Kanye's new album. Now, when you combine Kanye and God... Uh, two things that you're not allowed to talk about in the media or in popular culture, people will now lose their mind because it's been so ingrained that these are taboo subjects. Try doing it around people. I challenge you. They will literally run away because you've committed wrong speak. And in the court of social justice, wrong speak means you're evil and I cannot be associated with you. But as more and more people retreat from traditional politics, from traditional party lines, and become more nuanced, become more centrist and reasonable in their approaches to things, because they've seen the media lie so much, and this is all people really ask for, is for you to be reasonable, you have seen the window close and close, and it's mostly with young people who are trapped in this little pop culture Hollywood bubble. Uh, the window closes on what you're allowed to talk about with these people, lest ye be offensive. Try to use biblical speak here. For ye be offensive. If you stray away from the cult even a little bit, you are ostracized. People will run away. White people will clutch their pearls and be offended like it's 1933. Oh my, I never. My word. And it's like you're in China and you've spoken poorly of the Chinese government and the regime. Your social score is on the line here, people. Your social score is on the line. You can't be talking about Kanye West. You can't be talking about Jesus. <laughs> So just try it. If if you're brave enough, maybe you don't want to be bothered. Maybe you like you like riling things up like me. Just like, try saying Kanye did nothing wrong, or you like Trump. Even if you don't agree with these things, try saying uh, you don't completely agree with the climate change movement. Even if you don't agree with these things, you can freak people out. Just do it as an experiment, and you will see the little boys of the group run away to the confines. The people who are just like, what are you talking about this for? Oh my god, a serious conversation? We can't be doing that. And then they get mad at the people who get voted in. But you can't have conversations about it. But I did save the best for last. I did, I did. This one I found actually late. I was done writing um, and preparing for this. And then I found this one. This is a guy named Benjamin Dixon claiming that Kanye is using Christianity to spread white supremacy. 
Kanye West is spreading a Christianity that is telling you that the way to your liberation is through Donald Trump. <laughs> He's telling you that the way to your freedom is through the Republican Party. He's saying that you're actually in bondage and that he's free, but he's defining freedom as being in bed with white supremacists. The very specific type of religion that Kanye West has openly embraced is a religion of white supremacy because he is asking you. No, he is downright telling you that the route to freedom for you is through the slave master. He's telling you that your route to freedom is through a party that has done everything in its power to disenfranchise you, that has done everything in power to vilify you. Anytime you look at police brutality in our country, nine times out of ten, you're going to find Republicans standing with the police officers, blaming and vilifying black people. Kanye West is telling you that that's your route to freedom. When they figuratively say they, Kanye West and Republicans say that you're on the plantation of the Democratic Party, do you ever pause to think that these are the same people who are trying to maintain the spirit and the legacy of the Confederacy in actual plantations? So they are figuratively irritating you by saying you're on the Democratic plantation while they are literally trying to protect monuments to white supremacy, including actual plantations where white folks still go to get married because they think it's romantic. And this is what Kanye West is selling you. My response to this was that this was either the most naive or evil take you could possibly come away with on this. I mean, historically, he gets every single thing wrong. The Democrats started the KKK. They didn't want to end segregation. They didn't want to end Jim Crow. They didn't want to end lynching. Then you can fast forward to people like Joe. If that's and then people will go with the party switch, even though a couple of those are after it. You can fast forward. You can go. Joe Biden didn't want to end segregation in buses. Uh, the Clintons. Hillary calling them black guys super predators. The, the the crime bills of the Clintons and the Bidens. Most violent cities in the USA are Democrat cities. The Baltimores, the Philadelphias, the Detroits, the Chicagos, St. Louis. Do I go on? Los Angeles, San Francisco. Not very violent as far as I know, but feces and drugs everywhere. But remember in all of this that I'm not a Republican. I do not identify as a Republican. I agree with some of the things. It's more of the, the sense that the Democrats push everyone so far away that uh, you can't help but by comparison uh, make the other side look good. Now, this history is not refuted. All the things I just mentioned. It is just shoved under the rug and pretended to not have actually happened. I'm putting a link in the description of some history that you can read up on. That's a pretty fast track. It's not very long. Probably take you 15 minutes to read to update you on a lot of things that you may not have known. I didn't know a lot of these things until later in my life. And it's pretty much the opposite of what popular culture will tell you. Everything that I said and more. It's very interesting stuff. So even though statistically half of all people will agree with you, in pop cultures and far leftist circles, and I've been caught a couple times the last couple of weeks in interviews. Um, those will be in the description as well. I've given a couple interviews where I catch myself having to say left-leaning people because I don't want to say leftists. I don't want to say um, liberals all the time because it's not that anymore. It's not. It's not an entire swath of people. I've had to say left-leaning people for la lack of a better term better term because when you get into this far confine where you are only allowed to talk about these certain things in this tiny little window in this illuminati shaped window it's a very small amount of people and it's very clear that they're getting them from this all this information from the same sources uh, from pop culture from hollywood from late night tv that sort of things because you can f you know their arguments before they're going to say them and you and you can you know you can say one thing you know they're going to answer with that and then you know if you answer with this this or this you know exactly what their answer will be it's always the same if you speak up against the cult you are to be labeled an outcast you'll be you are to be labeled evil and cast out of the town these topics are forbidden and uh, then they have to sacrifice a goat or something to to cleanse themselves just like in the bible it's it's a reversal. It's a religion without actual religion. They're condemning Christianity. They're condemning all these things. And remember, I'm not a Christian Republican by any stretch of the imagination. But it's obvious to me that they're condemning all these things in a religious fashion. 
climate change has become a religion. Uh, being able to speak about certain things has become a religion. And if you speak against their religion, you are an evildoer and you should be sacrificed in the court of public appeal, which means kick you off Twitter, kick you off Facebook, deplatform, uh, no KKK, no fascist USA, uh, no borders, no wall, no USA at all. You know all the phrases. I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. <laughs>